Good evening, Raider fans, and this is the Raider Nation podcast, and I am your host, Raider Greg. Welcome to the show. We have a great show in the pregame for the Washington Potato Skins, or the Red Skins. Uh, Norv's old team, he's going back home. I wish we could leave him there and not bring him back on the plane. Of course, that's my comment. That's not the show, however. I want to get some shouts out to Niles Ackerman. Niles, who comments as Nilbilly Boy, excellent, excellent, excellent. Also, Frank, he's in the same column. And Raider Dave, you guys are consistent comment putters, uh, comment writers, and you're cerebral. It's good to see, and it's nice to see banter, friendly banter on the site. It's good for all the Raider fans. Also, Mike from Connecticut, thank you for your comment, and thank you for being a loyal listener, and Matt as well. And, of course, always a shout-out to my good brother, Sean, of RaiderTake.com, who has an excellent blog, and you guys who haven't visited it should do it because he's got some of the best haikus I have ever seen in the NFL, probably the only haikus in the NFL, and they are the best because they are truly from a diehard Raider fan. Tonight's show, we're going to talk about the skins, We're going to talk about the failed number two Jeff George experiment. Moss speaks up, and the next coach for the Oakland Raiders will be... Let's get right to the show and, without hesitation, get to (laughs) the failed number two Jeff George experiment. You all remember Jeff George? Incredible arm. What a beautiful pass, but he had no head. It was another headless quarterback who kept throwing incompletions and interceptions and it was a shame to see well he was kind of funny when he melted down he was like the baby he was like the baby Huey crybaby on the on the field unlike him Collins of course we all I don't need to go into that I've already beat Collins up it's like kicking the dead horse but here's an interesting thing and I just want to share it with you Raider fans now, cutting Collins this at the end of this season would be huge for the Raiders. And if he doesn't improve his play, i.e., if we don't get seven wins on his back in the next seven games, we will save a total of $12 million towards our $30 million salary cap hit that we're going to get next year. So if Con- Collins continues to melt down, he could find himself cut like a Thanksgiving turkey by the end of this season. And please, Al... No Chris Carr and no John Kitna, because those are two things that are floating around, and I hope they float on down the line like the sewer pipe. So, the Jeff George experiment number two has failed miserably, and that's all i got to say about that. But interesting, though, how we could save almost half of our salary cap hit cutting one guy. That's very good for us, because... It shows that we can keep the semblance of the team that we have, and that's a very good clue as to where we could be next season. I have to talk about next season because everybody else is talking about next season. Okay, Randy Moss speaks out. Randy Moss is going to be on ESPN on Sunday. He's got an interview that is supposed to be pretty good. I I can't wait to see it, but there's excerpts and little quotations along the way. Um, Moss on Owens, there's no way that uh, he wants Owens in the locker room. And, you know, Moss knows it, and so does Owens. Uh, It would be a cancer to have Owens, I feel, as a Raider fan, in our locker room. Uh, He's not a team player, and he's not a bad boy like we get out of the NFL. We we pick the bad boys. We pick Randy Moss because he's a bad boy, not a crybaby. And uh, we don't need crybabies in the, the Oakland Raiders. And unless you got a take on it, please uh, email me at www.raidernationpodcast.com and check it out. Give me a reason why you think that we deserve to have this bonehead Owens. I don't think it's happening, and I wouldn't want it to happen to our Oakland Raiders. Uh, Randy Moss is a, a quality individual. When they compare the two, it always makes me sick. Moss came from very, very poor beginnings, a very, very poor town in Mississippi. And uh, let me tell you, Coming from Mississippi and having, I was born in Alabama. I know that country down there, and I know the people there. Sincere to the point, he's a family guy. He's a quiet guy. Now, you don't know, but he's very, very active in charity. He uses his time as far as uh, helping other people goes. 
This guy is on the J-O-B, and he's not out there shouting it out. But he is helping a whole lot of people, and he's a great guy. Don't let this media hype put bad things in your mind about our Randy Moss. He is a great individual, and he is the epitome of commitment to excellence. He has great character, and like I said, he helps charities of all different kinds, and you never know it because he's not blabbing about it. Okay? His family time is paramount, and he shows what it's like to be a real Raider because he does what he has to do off the field for those he loves and those he cares about. Okay, And as far as this comment that he had on his six-second silence after asked about North Turner, well, that goes for the whole locker room. I bet even Lamont Jordan would give a six-second, maybe a ten-second pause before he answered that question you know you're not going to get a roll off the tongue of he's a great coach and we you know we love working for the guy you know he's a nice guy like i said north turner mr rogers and as far as the moss versus owens deal it's class versus ass that sums up the whole deal okay who will be the next coach for the oakland raiders who will lead the silver and black to the next super bowl I don't know. Make no mistake, though. Turner must go. I think we all that know that. Unless this guy wins the next seven games, has a seven-game winning streak, which I don't see. I don't see him being able to call seven games in a row. Um, then I believe Norv will go at the end of the year. Who will be the next leader of the Silver and Black? Herm Edwards, perhaps? You know, he's shopping around for a team. And, you know, yes, he didn't do well with the Jets, but the Jets ain't got nothing going on. Herm Edwards is a great coach. He's got great character. He also kicks ass, and he takes names. He's a kind of character that's going to hold this team up to its accountability, and he's going to make people do the things that have to get done to make a victory. I think Herm Edwards would be a great choice. Why don't you guys let me know what your choices are? Because I will tell you this. Um, there's a couple of coaches that are out there I don't want to see. But as far as the uh, six-second quiet time by Randy Moss, I believe that that's something that everyone in the locker room is talking about, especially Lamont Jordan, since he's been saying he wants to run the ball more, and he ain't. You better believe he's got a comment, and it might come out after the departure of the ex-Washington Redskin quarter uh, coach, Norv Turner, uh, at the end of the season. Let's get to the skins. Now, I went to the skins site, and I also went to the Skinny on the Skins, which is their podcast, and they're a little bit late. I haven't heard anything about the Raiders game. I haven't seen anything about the Raiders game. They're still talking about the Bucks game that they lost by one point, and uh, I haven't heard one word. So I have no comment on Skinny on the Skins other than they better get their own site and not be one of these site inside of a site thing because they're actually part of a Total Sports Network podcast site. They don't have their own web page and I mean, they're doing it. They're doing their job, but you know, they don't have a web page where I can email them and get to them. So, we'll just leave Skinny on the Skins as skinny as they are and move on from there. Okay, now this is the first of seven Raider fans. we got to win this game and go on to the next, but it's a game at a time for the team. It's a game at a time for the fans, and this game we must win. Now, if you look at the teams on their stats, it looks like the Redskins are way better in all the statistics than the Raiders. But you know what statistics are like. They're written on paper. You know what I say about paper? Well, you can wipe with it because it doesn't matter at the end of the game when the whistle blows and you've either lost or or you're one because every game is different every team plays against other teams and like they say on any Sunday any given team can get out a victory that's what they did to us the last thing they played us when we were seven and four they came into Oakland and they beat us 28 to 19 they beat us and we were on a roll and so that just goes to show you that they were the underdogs and they came in and they worked us over when we were on a run in the uh, the days of uh, Gruden. Clinton Portis. Now, I went to their site. I want to tell you, Clinton Portis has a little video take. Uh, you can go on their site and check it out. Now, this clown is dressed in a green suit with purple hair 
and cool. It's big glasses with cool on them, and he calls himself Dollar Bill. I, I really want you guys to check it out. Take a minute because you'll see what kind of a bonehead this guy is. He's calling a lot, man. He's surely flapping his lips about he don't care about Sap. Sap has to worry about him and how he's looking for holes in the offensive line so he can get his money. Well, I guess yardage is money. He's been making quite a lot of it, actually. 144 yards against the best defense in the NFC, which would be the Buccaneers. Now, he did say a lot about how he wants to come out to the Raiders. He says someone on the West Coast has his money, wants to get his money. You should just check it out. It's on the Washington Redskins site. And uh, look up Clinton Portis, because he worked us over also when he was playing for our dreaded foes, the Denver Doncos. I hate to even say that. It makes me sick. My, my mouth gets hurting after I say that. Okay, so he refers to his money. He refers to going after us. And, well, whatever. Clinton Portis, come on after us. That's what the Bills running back said. McGay, hee, 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 after he got 50 yards and went home with a big loss up his ass. Now, their wide receiver, Davis, is out for the game. He has a bad knee. That leads Santana Moss as the only real threat on the long ball and the primary target of uh, this guy here. Who is it? Uh, their quarterback. I even forget his name. Anyways, uh, Santana Moss is the guy who's going to come out big. So our secondary has to be ready for Santana because he's coming out. Now, I think our secondary can handle him. And, uh, by the way, here's another side note. I just ran across this in my notes, and I wanted to talk about it earlier, so I'll talk about it right now. Guess who the assistant head coach of offense is? Joe Bugle. Talk about a weird situation. Norv going back to Washington, playing against his old team, and we're playing against Joel Bugle, the head offensive coordinator for the Washington, who played three seasons with the Oakland Raiders and was our head coach in 97, which was a joke. It was the Joel Bugle era, and anybody who was a Raider fan in the Joel Bugle era can tell, totally tell, that this season – is ominously the same because once Bugle left, we got Gruden and we started winning games. And that just goes to show you how important coaching is. Uh, Joe Bugle's year here was dreaded. And, you know, when Nerv Turner got hired at the Raiders, I, it's the first thing I thought is Joe Bugle. I thought about it, and a buddy of mine at the firehouse goes, yeah, I hope Norv isn't like, I don't even like to say it, Joe Bugle. <laughs> So I just want to tell you fans that here we are suffering through another Joe Bugle season and we're going to go play against Joe Bugle's offense against the Redskins. And, it, you know, of all the things that I didn't see in the, you know, how the Raiders have the the uh, things that both teams have in common, you know, that's one thing that, that definitely didn't stick out. But it sticks out in my mind, the Joe Bugle era. We're in the Norv era, which is going to be a close second to the Joe Bugle era. And there's no love lost <clears throat> with the return of Norv to his beloved Washington area because there's Raider fans there in Washington who uh, know a lot of Washington Redskins fans because it's a very, very popular team in the area. they got a big fan base over there, and there's some good Raider fans there that are going to be at the game as well. Check them out when they're in the stands, and uh, you know they're going to be out there rooting for our team. However... Uh, the Washington Redskins did not like North Turner. They got sick and tired of this guy's flippy floppy, mamby pamby, marble mouth, everything that he's doing here with the Raiders. They were totally sick of it there. And that was the first time I got a chance to talk to someone who had actually uh, been to a game in Washington and I commented about North's coaching style, etc. And well, it goes without saying about Norm's lack of skill in being a head coach. Okay, now, the Skins allowed 113 yards per game running. Now, this better give Lamont Jordan the inspiration of a lifetime because he better get it going. And you know what, Norv, I hope you're listening because Lamont Jordan's not the only running back. We have Zach Crockett, and remember number 20? Justin Fargus, he's standing on the sidelines every game, and I don't see you using him. He can catch a ball out of the backfield. He's a great threat, 
and he would be a yes he would be kind of a creative play to great plays around players you don't normally use that would be something you definitely should do norv hey what a concept anyways with them allowing so many running yards per game there is absolutely no reason that we sh lamont shouldn't get 24 to 30 touches on this game and really work up the running game so we can give our quarterback Kerry Collins an opportunity to throw the ball okay so and Justin Fargus does very well around the corner he does good along the outside and he can catch balls out of the backfield he did it last season and he did a pretty doggone good job of it before he got hurt now Norv have you ever heard of the quick slant how about that we got some of the fastest receivers in football, and I have yet to see a quick slant on this game. I always see down the sidelines. We have so many down the sideline passes that I can't even believe it. I think I've seen Randy Moss catch one slant. Other than that, it's all down the sidelines. Let's be creative now. Also, Norv, how about Courtney Anderson? Or how about Williams? Williams is a great prospect. He did great against the Cowboys. Let's do some of our tight ends. I don't know how many times I have to sell, tell you this, Norv. I, maybe I should get you on the phone. It's about time we start using some imagination on this field and spreading things out. And doing things are not predictable, Norv, because you, if I scripted your game, if I went over the last four games the Raiders played, I bet you I could script every play as a defensive coordinator because I can almost do it every play in the stadium or in my lounge chair right now now so let's use those tight ends now the D you got to keep going after this guy uh, now we went we kept Bell from and the Broncos to a hundred yards which was pretty doggone good compared com, considering the offensive line that Denver had he had 33 carries and a hundred yards we can really do this against the skins we should be able to shut this guy, Clinton Portis, down and keep him down, especially with what he said about Sapp and what he said about the defensive line. Now, I know I told you he weighed 144 yards against the number one defense in the AFC. Brunel, 23 for 35, two interceptions, two TDs. Brunel's another spaz. He reminds me of Collins. He's an older quarterback that has been kind of recycled, and here he is uh, running the team and he's hot and cold. Another thing about Brunel is when you pressure him, sack this guy twice, and the game is ours. The, the problem with him is when he was younger, he could really get out of the pocket and hurt you. He's older now. He's dropped a couple of steps, and he has a tendency to fumble the ball. He has fumbled more balls than Collins, if you can believe it. <clears throat> this is an opportunity for the Raiders' defense, which is coming on strong, baby. We can really put it to him on the defense. Of course, we have to score points. We can't just depend on our defense. Well, maybe our defense can score some points, and that would be good. We need some interceptions. We don't don't have one this season. It would be good to get some inter, some interceptions here this this in this game to uh, actually boost the confidence of our de, our defensive secondary. <clears throat> now, all in all, I just ask Norv, please. Be creative, not predictable. Jam the receivers on the line of scrivers. Don't let them out. Don't let Santana have free reign to the field right off the bat. Pursue Brunel. Pressure this guy. Make him make mistakes. Because like Collins, once he gets sacked a couple of times, he will lose his cool, and that will be it. Last of all, my comment on this game is, if Collins is in meltdown mode, bench his ass put him down sit him down stick to we in there give him an opportunity to win the game for us we have absolutely nothing to lose and if you did this this might save your ass turner from being fired next season so if you decide to do something instead of mealy mouth mr rogers your way for the remainder of the season and step up and make some decisions as a head coach should be creative with your game plan you might pull out a win here and this could be the first of seven which is what I'm gonna call every podcast we gotta have every single game so once we get through with this game we can move on to the next and if we are lucky if we can have Norv Turner buy into this creative offense 
and the defense plays consistently like they have been, giving the ball back to the offense in key plays, making the fumbles. I mean, Derek Burgess is on fire. Our defense is on fire. Kirk Morrison, they're causing these turnovers. Our offense needs to capitalize. The only way you can do that is with some creative plays that the defensive coordinator of the other team is not going to know what's coming. Well, that's about summing it up for the Redskins game. Raider fans, loving it right now because we got nothing to lose. I want you guys to think about those comments. I want you to think about um, our head coach. Think about what we can do next season because uh, – it's coming up on thinking time on who we got to replace, North Turner. Keep your eyeballs peeled and keep your ears open because we'll be talking about that one on more than one occasion. So let's beat those skins. Let's beat those potato skins into the ground, pour some cheese and sour cream on them, stick them in the oven, and bake them. That's what I say, and that's what I'm talking about. Thanks again, fans, for listening in to the Raider Nation podcast. Once again, let me remind you to vote on Podcast Alley. It takes a click and a pick. Go to my website, RaiderNationPodcast.com. Click on the Podcast Alley icon. Put your email address in there and send it off because they help me out with the standings. It's good to be number three, number two. Hey, could be number one in all of sports out of 9,000 podcasts. But right now, Raider Nation podcast is doing pretty good, and that's i got to thank the fans for that. Okay, until the next time, the post-game show from this next game on Sunday. Remember, Raider fans, be safe, drive safe, don't drink and drive because the person you hit could be young, could be somebody's mother, sister, or brother, and you don't want to be doing that action. Stay safe. Like I said, no drinking and driving. So I am Raider Craig, and I am out.